Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and today I'd like to give you a little bit of an overview of Junkers watches. Uh, it occurred to me when I was going to film this video that Junkers might be the brand that I've been carrying the longest that I currently still carry. There were other brands in the past, Elise, Trius, uh, smattering of others. Uh, but those have all come and gone. This brand has stuck with me for, it's got to be well over 10 years now. Uh, and what was really cool when I went to Basel was I was able to meet the person face-to-face -face that I've been talking to uh, for over 10 years. Of course, I saw photos of him. I knew what he looked like, but I never actually got to interface with him. And it was really nice to meet him. Junkers Watches is named after uh, Hugo Junkers. Uh, Hugo Junkers is a German uh, aviation pioneer. He passed away in the, uh, I believe, the 1920s. Uh, he's basically credited with doing aircraft skins in aluminum, which obviously today, you know, all aircraft skins are aluminum for the most part. I guess composites, obviously, the Dreamliner and then military aircraft have been composite skin for a while. But as far as, you know, general aviation, you know, aluminum skins, uh, that is mostly thanks to him. He didn't really design any aircraft. Uh, some aircraft do bear his name, but it's mostly in honor and remembrance rather than, you know, that he was a direct uh, person who designed those aircraft. Uh, the watches are manufactured by a company called Point Tech. It's P-O-I-N-T-T-E-C dot D-E. That's their website. They're over in Germany. They own both Junkers that we carry and Graf Zeppelin. All their watches are made in Germany. They say it on the dial. You can see it on the bottom of the dial there. And it also says it on the case back. And what's important to me with that is I can tell my customer they're made in Germany. And I don't have to worry if they really are made in Germany. There is actually, you know, a made in Germany society, quote unquote, that checks up on them, uh, that makes sure they are really being, you know, made in Germany to the specifications required. Uh, that watch I just showed you, though, has that, has a, I'll show it up close later, has a corrugated dial on it, you know, like an aircraft skin, uh, like the JU-52 aircraft that more or less bears his name. Uh, so Junkers is manufactured, like I said, by Point Tech. Um, Point Tech themselves as a company does not sell direct to the public. I know there is a website that operates in Europe. Actually, it's in Germany. Uh, it uses Junkers in the name. It's not the manufacturer. It's not the company. It's not the distributor. Uh, they're kind of squatting on the name and using it. And um, In my opinion, I think they're actually trying to fool the customer into believing they're buying it from the manufacturer. Uh, just a quick commercial. Uh, the only way you can, if you're in the USA and you're listening, the only way you can get a USA or Canadian warranty is if you purchase it from within the state. If you purchase it from overseas, nobody in the USA will cover the warranty. Uh, so the watches are named after Hugo Junkers, and they're manufactured under license. And it's a wide variety. I'm going to show you six of them in a little while. This is probably the most popular guy. It's this Power Reserve Bauhaus-inspired watch with a nice Miyota movement in it. And they run the range from, you know, mid-200s up to like five, six. And they have some that touch like $1,000. But mostly they're between two and five hundred dollars, and they represent a, a great value. Now I'm going to show you, like I said, Bauhaus watches. I'm going to show you automatics with power reserves. I'll show you quartz-based GMTs. I'll show you quartz-based Chronos. I'll show you some basic Pilots watches. Uh, they just make a wide variety. Whereas the other brand that they manufacture, Graf Zeppelin, I did a video on Graf Zeppelin a few months ago, and maybe I'll have to do another one soon. I did five watches from them. I uh, is more of, I want to say, a, a fancy side of aviation. Um, whereas this is more, I think, uh, at least, you know, maybe the Bauhaus or not. These are, you know, minimalist designs, very simple. Uh, but the other one I showed you, that GMT and the other ones I'll show you over there, they're more, you know, when you look at it, you go, wow, that's a pilot's watch. You know, it, it screams aircraft. So I'll do my own wrist check really quick. And today, you caught me, I'm only wearing one watch. So for those of you that said you wear two watches all the time, and I say most of the time, this is one of those days I'm not. I'm wearing a Seiko Orange Monster, and the reason for this was, you know, people say the monsters are the king of passive luminescence. Uh, I had an overnight at uh, at, a muse at a local museum with uh, the Cub Scouts that my son's in, and I want to be able to see the time at night. I didn't want to have to turn on my phone, so I wore this watch, and I can clearly say that well, I was up most of the night, but I could read the time up until lights on at 6.15. So uh, it was very, uh, it's true, they glow like flashlights. It really is amazing. The hype on the on the luminescence is totally true. Anyway, let's get over to the table, and let's check out Junkers watches. So I have six Junkers watches in front of you. Uh, three of them, the first three are Bauhaus. It tends to be their more popular models. Bauhaus, you know, is a minimalist uh, design period that occurred in the uh, early 1900s. 
Uh, and then the final three are, are more pilots type of watches. I have an uh, assortment of quartzes, automatics, chronos, dual times. I uh, try to cover the entire gamut. You know, we carry about four or five dozen different models. I don't want to show you everything, but I like to give you just a, you know, a broad spectrum um, of what the brand offers. So I'm going to start with the one in front and then we'll work our way uh, back down the list. So the first one I'm going to start with is this uh, automatic power reserve model, the Bauhaus design. You'll notice immediately it's a power reserve model since it has a needle up here that tells you if it's minimally wound or fully wound, a full 40 hours. So when you wind it and by turning the crown clockwise, you'll see that needle move. And also when you wear the watch throughout the day, the needle will move since it's an automatic. At the bottom, you have a clear 24 hour indicator. It tells you if it's AM or PM, a date, Simple hands with a very minimal amount of luminescence. This is a dress watch. Uh, you also have loom dots for reference on the dial. Proudly emblazoned on the bottom of the crystal is made in Germany. And you see, you can see it uh, start to reflect off that heavily domed Hesselite crystal. Uh, Hesselite is another name for acrylic, more or less. It is the softest crystal material out there. If you watch some of the other watch and learn videos, we're talking about crystal materials. Uh, so it does scratch, uh, but you can buff the scratches out rather easily. Stainless steel case, exhibition case back. Beautiful movement. So this is a Miyota movement, 26 joules. It's the Miyota 9132. This is a certainly a high grade movement. This is a movement that was built you know, in my opinion, to rival the ETA 2824. Uh, most watches that use the 9000 series movements do go for four or $500. And this one is at 499 uh, retail. See a nice strap, buckle. What I like about this brand, and one of the many things I like about it is, so this is an Italian strap, as you can tell by the wording on it. The strap is a phenomenal strap it's not garbage it's a great quality it's very soft it's very supple you know it's real leather you know a lot of times some brands you know they have a watch and the strap is you know and eh, so so you know seiko i think is popular for doing that on a lot of their uh, leather model uh, watches in this case no all the straps all the watches i'm going to show you are really nice straps so let's get into some of the specs now that i've uh, given a little overview of the watch uh it is a citizen movement as i said automatic hand winding and it hacks you pull the crown out to set the time and the second hand stops it is 40 millimeters in diameter and then it's around 11 millimeters thick with that domed crystal and then that tip to tip dimension which is right here is 44 millimeters it's got a 20 millimeter lug so if you wanted to swap the strap out for something else you really have an endless endless amount of options and that two-year warranty that we spoke about in the beginning. So this is, like I said, one of the most popular models. Uh, I love the color of the dial. It does come in black as well, uh, but this ivory creamish color definitely is the runaway. So I wanted to mention one more thing before we move on to the next one. Obviously the name Junkers. A lot of people, I know in America, they just see junk. So, you know, if you're a native American, if you're a native English speaker, you know, you see junk and then maybe that turns you off. If it turns you off, fine, that's your own thing. Uh, but, you know, the name Junkers in Germany is certainly, you know, steeped in a lot of national pride and not even in Germany, just in the aviation community as a whole. You know, most people that are aviation buffs certainly know the name Hugo Junkers, uh, you know, with, with his advancements in uh, metal aircraft skin design. So let's move on from this Junkers to the next and I'll do it slowly so you can see I wanted to bring this one on board as the next one since it's a lower cost alternative if 499 is out of your is out of your bracket I wanted to show you this one so as you can probably have guessed this is a quartz version of the Bauhaus design uh, this also comes in different dial color configurations I am showing you the cream color again because that's what I like uh, simple hands date I, I guess maybe i didn't do the loom shop before i'll do it really quick and you can see you know it's not a flashlight it's got a minimal amount of luminescence but you can you know certainly ascertain the time if you had to so this is powered by a ronda 515 movement so simple battery quartz operated movement so it'll be fairly fairly accurate same case dimensions 40 millimeters 
This one's around 10 millimeters thick. The crystal is actually not as tall, but it still has a light. I mean, you could feed, you could do it by squeezing it and you could feel it. Uh, the reason why the other one had a taller crystal was because the hand stuck up further in the movement. This is a shorter crystal, so they can get away with a slightly shorter crystal, uh, around one millimeters less on the dome. And then, but your tip to tip is still gonna be at 44 millimeters, 20 millimeter lug, 30 meters water resistant and as was the first one i showed you i guess i didn't mention that same beautiful strap case back has individual screws and here's something else that i like about the company uh right here they have this little 2d barcode that they started putting on all their quartz watches and this was actually done by them voluntarily at great expense pretty much just to control the market. And if a watch is sold anywhere, this code can easily be scanned and they know what distributor they sold it to. And if you're kind of, you know, if you follow the watch industry at all, you know, there's a lot of gray marketing that goes on. This definitely helps them, you know, control their gray marketing. Uh, so they know if they sold a watch to, you know, let's say the com country of France and it winds up in the USA, you know, they, they know exactly which distributor got that watch and they can they can try to nip that in the bud so the, the brand is kept clean. Uh, one thing that I guess a complaint, and I'll bring up the other one just to get that, just to talk about it briefly. Some people do complain that the, the rotor on the movement's noisy. It's not really the rotor, it's more the case design. The watch is very thin, very delicate, you know, both of these Bauhauses and the third one we're going to show you. So if there are any noises inside, you know, you will hear them. If it's quiet and you move your arm around, you'll hear the rotor spin um, on this one. You know, it's it's plastic, the, the crystal. It, it's not a hunk of steel. It's not a dive watch. Um, that would be one of the downsides that people do give to the watch. Uh, but for me, that's like such a minor thing in comparison to what you're getting. Uh, and this one comes in at uh, $259 in the quartz version. So next up is the Bauhaus Chronograph in black. Also comes in the cream dial, but I figured I'd give you a little break from the cream dials and show you something in the black family. This is a Ronda 5030D chronograph movement. So again, we're quartz, we're operating on a battery, we have a running seconds at the right, elapsed minutes on the left, 12 hour elapsed hours on the bottom. You can see it right there underneath the uh, chronograph seconds hand, which you actuate by pressing this button. There goes the seconds. After a minute, that will index, and then over time, the hours will index. So it's on the same quality strap. It's a nice black strap, Italian strap, nice polished buckle. It's it has It retains the same crystal that you just saw before, this Hesalite crystal. It's around 10 millimeters thick, 40 millimeters in diameter. 44 tip to tip same 30 meters water resistant so you're not going to go diving with this but you know you could easily wash your hands or do you know any other daily activities this watch does also come in the same cream color that you saw before uh in in the other watches i uh, just wanted again just give you a little bit of a break and show this on the other is the uh beautiful Junker signed crown it's, it's etched very nicely and the price on this one is $349. So a little more than the other one because we added the chronograph, but not as much as the automatic uh, that I showed you to open with. So moving on down, we'll take a look at something that is a little closer to the Junker's name, if you will. And that is this corrugated dial, this uh, JU-52, which is the name of an aircraft, the Iron Annie. He didn't exactly design this aircraft, but a lot of inspiration for the aircraft came from uh, came from his mind, uh, his inventions, his thoughts, ideas. So this has a corrugated dial. You can see the lines in the dial. It also comes in a white or more of a steelish color. It's a dual timer. Runs on a Ronda 6203, so we're still quartz. Got a nifty big date feature at the 12 that you can see luminous hands and luminous numbers so you can easily read it in the dark this nice black strap with contrast stitching it's got a decent pad to it as you can see and a deployant buckle so this is one of those fancy buckles where you you attach it once and then you open it like you would a stainless steel bracelet 
you can set this second time zone at the six o'clock position to whatever time you want and it will track that second time in 12 hour format so it's like looking just as another clock on your watch or you know another 12 hour time on your watch and set one to home and one to away only for uh, from the factor do they come with them usually both set to the same exact time zone as you can see it's you know, around 324 on, on both clocks runs on one battery though solid screw down case back made in Germany you can see it at the top here upside down all these are made in Germany it's also on the dial so we have now still 40 millimeters we have a mineral crystal so it's flat we're at 10 millimeters thick but now with these expanded lugs now we're getting more into like a modern watch this is 48 millimeters from tip to tip 20 millimeters for the strap so again if you want to substitute something else uh, you have your pick of the litter and a 50 meter water resistance this is GMT model 6644-2 I guess I did not mention any of the part numbers and I was remiss in doing that so maybe I'll just shoot through them really quick I'm sorry for that this was the power reserve model automatic this was a 6050-5 the quartz version that I showed you is 6070-5 the chronograph is a 6086-2 the one I just showed you is a 6640-2, and then this one is a 6644-2. Sorry about that. So this is a GMT, but the way this GMT works is it's got this red tip GMT hand. This is more conventional to how a GMT watch works or a dual timer, and it rotates once per day. So you see it's outside of the rim is marked on this 24-hour scale. So you set that by pulling out the crown one click, one way will change the date and the other way will change the DM GMT hand. So let's say over in, I don't know, in Hong Kong, it is, I guess it's around 8.30 a.m. or so. So you just set this so it's 8, 8.30, and there you can see it's halfway between the 8 and the 9, so 8.30. And this will keep track of the time in that second time zone. Very easy to change. It's extremely functional because now you can see at a glance whether it's AM or PM in your second time zone. Kind of handy. Uh, luminescence, of course. Glows very well. So this is 40 millimeters in diameter, 12 millimeters thick, so it's a little bit thicker. Flat mineral crystal. It is going to be 48 millimeters tip to tip like the one I just showed you. It's this black, same, similar black leather strap with contrast stitching. 50 meters water resistance. Runs in a Ronda 505 movement. And this one comes in at right around $229. Extremely affordable, nice looking watch. Made in Germany, again at the bottom of the dial. And it's going to be somewhere on the case back, right there. And there's the likely, likeliness of Hugo Junkers. And then the last one I want to show you is a pilot's watch in every sense of the imagination. So this watch is powered by the Miyota 821A movement, which hand winds. Uh, it doesn't hack. See, I pull out the crown, the second hand doesn't stop. Uh, but it, it's got this nice exhibition case back, screw down. Water resistant to 50 meters. Still made in Germany, even though it's got a Japanese movement in it. That's, that's legit, you can do that. This one is going to be 40 millimeters in diameter by 12 millimeters thick. And tip to tip again is now going to be 50 millimeters. The lugs are getting a little bit wider and wider. This is model number 6150-2. You can see it's got a brushed case. And because this has the Japanese movement, uh, this comes in actually at 259 which is really affordable. And it's even uh, it's around 70 bucks less or so than the Laco Miyota base pilot's watches. Uh, the star on this one might be the crown. That crown is really good looking. Easy to grab with gloves. I mean, I'm wearing gloves. Uh, but easy to grab with any kind of gloves on your hand to wind it or change the time if necessary. Of course, it's going to have luminescence, like they all do. Glows very well. This has more of a uh, Hirsch Liberty type of strap, this black strap, this thick strap. You know, it's, uh, it's not padded in the sense it's stuffed. It's more of a uh, single cut thick strap. Uh, it's got the contrast stitching. Just really, really nice again. Just a good looking strap. Good looking piece. Nice pilot's watch. Simple, easy to read. It's got the nice Junkers crest right on the front. What I like to do now, as usual, is I'll uh, pop each one of them on my six and three quarter inch wrist, and you can take a look at how they look on me to get an idea of how I might look on you.
So the first one up will be the uh, Bauhaus Power Reserve, the 6060-5. It's a great looking watch, 40 millimeters, fits perfect. On my wrist, it'll fit a wrist, you know, decently a lot larger. I think it'll even go smaller if, if it had to. It's very light, very comfortable. The strap is extremely soft. Uh, the other two Bauhaus watches are the same exact size, so I'm not going to try them on because you obviously can get the same feel for the sizing uh, on this one. Next one up is the Iron Annie, the corrugated dial, the 6640-2. Really nice fit. Still 42 millimeters. Fits very well. Excuse me, 40 millimeters. And I love the look of the dial, the lines on it. It's really pretty. Next one up is that GMT with the red 24-hour hand, 6644-2. Another great looking watch. Simple, basic pilot's watch with a little functionality of the GMT hand. Adds a nice splash of color. You know, I think that with a, a black strap with red stitching would really make this one pop. Or a uh, black and red nylon strap, like one of those one-piece straps. Uh, that would really do a good job on this one. Last one up is that automatic quintessential pilot's watch with that great strap with the tied off edges. Again, very simple, easy to read. Very clean dial. Really looks great on the wrist. Fits extremely well again. You know, lugs aren't too long. Uh, a, bold, a bold statement of a pilot's watch. So this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you a bunch of Junkers wristwatches. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to our channel if you have not done so yet. If you have any questions or comments or have something to share, please put it down below. I love to read it, and I do try to respond to everything that is written. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.